Hello and welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to talk about database migrations. Okay, so what exactly are database migrations? Well, a migration is uh, something like version control for databases. What that means is that uh, if you come here to uh, my blog or Laravel folder and then you go to database and then you go to migrations you see a few migration files here okay so what these migration files are is they describe the structure of a table so what you do is you create a structure of a table and then instead of going directly to PHP my admin to create a table here you do it through a migration. So the advantage of doing that is that in future, if you want to go back to an earlier version, you're going to have it here because as you can see, there are versions here of these migrations. And so you can just tell it, I want to go back two databases ago, and then it's going to retrieve everything back and then create the way the databases were some time back. And also the advantage is that if you're working in a group, you just create these migrations and then you send them to the whole group. And then they can just run those migrations so that you are running exactly the same database. You are testing on the same database as the other in the team. So this is like version control. It's more like uh, the way GitHub is for code. That's how migrations are for databases. Okay, so let's see how we can create a migration and how we can, uh, how it is, it can be useful. So in our case, we have our database here called my blog, and then we have two uh, tables, customers and users. Now, Laravel does come with its own migrations here, as you have seen, and one of them is for users table like this one right here. So just to avoid problems, it's better you just remove your users table if this is the first time you are creating a migration. So I'm just going to drop that one here and maybe I'll leave. Let me just drop all of them so that uh, we can start our sour or our fresh. <laughs> okay, so how do we create a migration? Of course, we're going to use Artisan. So I'm going to right click here where there's Artisan and open containing folder. That way I go straight to the folder containing Artisan. Then I can go inside the, uh, the what's that, the address and type CMD for the command line. So the command line starts inside the folder I am in right now, So which is always good. So now what I want to do is run Artisan. Obviously we use PHP and say Artisan and then say, uh, create full colon migration so we create a migration and now that we have to give it a name now the naming convention for uh, migrations is you say you start by saying create and then you put an underscore and then the name of the table so I want to create the posts table the users table will be created automatically because there's already a migration there. So I'll say create posts and then underscore again, say table. That's how you do it. So artisan, PHP, artisan, create, full colon, migration. Then the name of the migration, which is create posts table. And then hit enter and pray that things actually work out. So it's running in the background. So I'm, ooh. Wait, I may have made a mistake here. So if you do make a mistake like here, you just type PHP like this, and then you say artisan. Mm -hmm. Then you press enter like this. And then, because it's very easy to forget some of these commands like here, and then you go through this and see, okay, what was I supposed to do? So let's look for the section for migrations. Hmm. So there's migrate, uh, there's migrate rollback, there's migrate here, but this is not what we're looking for. So it seems make is the keyword for making stuff. 
So it's make migration, create new migration file. Whoa, looky there. So now what you do, once you do that, you type CLS to clear the screen, and then you try again, PHP, artisan. Let me reduce this here. Artisan make migration, and then let's say create uh, posts table presenter and hope this time it works. So here you can see it says created migration and that's the name of the migration. So if I go back to my, uh, this is Artisan here. If I go back to my database migrations, you see that there's a create posts migration here. Very good. So all it did, it didn't cre actually create the table. It created this class right here. And then when I want to create the migration, it's going to run this class right here. Okay, so let me come back here. It seems like it's running some stuff in the background. I have no idea why. I'm just going to close that. So now here, when you see this, it's going to say schema create. So this means this is a migration for creating uh, a table. And then you see here, there's a function up meaning when you run this one is for creating and this down is for when it will be run when uh, Laravel decides to take down the uh, the table this is why it says drop if exists posts and then create posts so if you wanted to you don't need to use artisan you can simply copy this and change the relevant stuff like create posts table. You can say create members table, you change it there. And then you just change the name here and you change the name there. And just like that, uh, and then you obviously have to change the file name. It's not really a good idea to do it manually because the file name also matters here. So it would be a good idea to just use Artisan to do it. But now if we look here, we have two columns. Now there's the ID column. So this is how you create columns here. Okay. So there's the ID column and then there's the timestamps. Now these timestamps are those default timestamps that come with Laravel, which is created at and updated at. So if you want to put those automatically, you just do that. But then what happens if I want to put a column for name, for example. So this is how you add columns. So this one will be uh, string okay string name like that if you want to specify a value or how many characters you want I can put something like 20 here if I want to then I can also do string so string name um, maybe email like that so you don't have to put a number there. You can just leave it there and then you need to put its default, which I think is 255. I'm not sure there, but you can do that or you can put your own version like this. So let's just try this simple one here and see how it will work. So I expect to have one, this is the primary key. One, two, three, this one creates two. So one, two, three, four, five columns here. So I will save this file like this. And then all I have to do now is go back to Artisan. Where is this? Refresh. Open containing folder. Again, CMD. And then now I'm going to say PHP Artisan. And then just say migrate. Like that. Enter. And then once I do that, it starts creating those available migrations there. So you can see now it says I created user stable, user stable. Failed jobs table, password resets, create post table, blah, blah, blah. So let's come back here and look at my blog and see. You see all this has been created on our behalf. Now we are more interested in the posts table to see its structure. So as you can see here, it's var card 20, variable character 100, just like we specified. And then the timestamps is created at and updated at, which are used by Laravel itself. And then it created our primary key there, which is awesome. So that's how you create a migration.
So now if I want to roll back this migration, I can do that. And we're going to see how to do that in the next video.